Welcome to part two of my retouching tutorial. I'm Donovan Cole and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can retouch your photos using the dodge and burn technique. If you watched my last video you saw me go over a few different ways that you can clean up skin and hair using just a few different brushes and now I'm ready to move on to the next step in my retouching process which is dodge and burn and that is my go-to technique whenever I retouch my images. And just like dodge and burn can be used for a lot of different things, there's actually a lot of different ways to dodge and burn in Photoshop. But I use what is probably the most popular way, and that is with curve layers. So I start setting myself up for dodge and burn by first making a single curve adjustment layer. And I'm going to use this layer to do my dodging. So I'm going to slightly increase the overall exposure of my image. And I do make this in a very specific way, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. So if you make a point right around the middle and you notice these numbers down here at the bottom your input and output values before i start moving my point on the curve i want to make sure that both my input and output values read 130 so that i know that my point is relatively right around the middle of the graph and since i'm going to increase the exposure of my image i'm going to move this point up on my graph until my output value reads 138. And if I turn this layer on and off, it's a very subtle difference, and that's exactly what we want. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another curve adjustment layer, and I'm pretty much going to do the same exact thing. I'll make a point in the middle, make sure my input and output values read 130, and instead of increasing our exposure by moving the point up on the curve, we're going to decrease the exposure by moving it down on the curve. So I'm going to use the direction keys on my keyboard again until my output value reads 122. And I'll close this and turn this on and off. Very subtle difference. And the reason I make these that way is so that I know that both my dodge and my burn layers are at an equal distance from the center of that graph. I want to be as consistent and accurate as possible because those are the two most important things whenever it comes to retouching. So to finish creating these layers, if you notice these white boxes next to your adjustment layer, these are masks. And we're going to invert this mask by hitting Command or Control I, and it will turn it black. And pretty much what that does is it hides your adjustment layer. So our adjustment layer is still there, it's just not visible. So what we're going to do in a little while is we're going to use a brush tool, and we're going to paint over this mask to reveal what is underneath of it. So I'm going to name this first layer Dodge, and I'm going to name this top layer Burn. Next, I'm going to create a group of these layers by holding Shift and hitting Command or Control G, and I'm going to name this group Dodge and Burn. Next, I'm going to create myself a group of layers to help me get a better visual of the areas that I need to work on. So I am going to make my image black and white, and the way that I like to do that is by creating a solid color adjustment layer and choosing the color black. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to color. And it is best to do your dodging and burning in black and white because doing it in color can kind of tend to be distracting. So this is only temporary. Um, I will turn this off because I'm not going to keep my image in black and white. I do want to keep it in color. Another help layer that I can also create is I can make another curve adjustment layer. And I'm going to leave this layer alone for now, but this layer is going to be used to add contrast to my image so that I can see the darker and lighter areas a lot better. So I will close that out for now, and I'm going to make these layers into a group by holding Shift and hitting Command or Control G. And I'm just going to name this group Help. I'm actually going to turn this off for right now, and I'm going to open both my Help and my Dodge and Burn layers up. And I'm going to begin on my Dodge layer, because I tend to see the darker areas first, and then I move up to my Burn layer. But before we begin, we are going to need to create our brush. So go over to your toolbar and select your brush tool, or just hit B on your keyboard. And since we need this to be a very slow buildup, we're going to need to use a brush with a very low flow. I like to start with a flow of about 6%, 
and I usually go down from there, maybe at 4%, 2%, something like that. I keep my opacity at 100%. My mode is normal. I'll keep my brush size at about 20, but my brush size does change very often as I'm dodging and burning. And I'm going to make sure that my smoothing is set to zero. And I also have my airbrush turned on. And that is going to allow me to keep my stylus on my tablet to make a few continuous brush strokes without having to lift it up every single time. And I do use my Wacom tablet with my right hand. So my left hand is always on my keyboard. And since my brush size is constantly changing, I've changed my keyboard shortcuts to increase and decrease my brush size to Q and W. And if you want to do that, you can come up to edit and go down until you see keyboard shortcuts and you can change any keyboard shortcut to whatever you like. And that really can help speed up your workflow. And now that my brush settings are good, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my help layers and I'm going to open up my contrast curve layer. And I find the best way to do this is to grab your white point in the top right and move it slightly to the left and make another point right around here and drag it down until you feel like you can see everything you need to see. And I'll close that out. And I'm actually going to create a blank layer over top just so that I can show you what areas I'm going to dodge. The areas that I am looking for are darker areas, such as this area near her cheekbone, this area up here near her eyebrow, a few down here on her chin, and maybe some on her nose and up here on this side of her forehead. So those are areas that I'm looking for. And I do usually start my dodging on a global level. And what that means is I'm going to be working from further out. And once I feel like I'm comfortable there, then I will move in a little bit closer and start working on the smaller areas. And that's what we call micro dodge and burn. I'm going to go ahead and delete this blank layer and I'm going to select my dodge layer. Double check to make sure that all of my settings are good. 6% flow and do make sure that you are painting with the color white because you are on a black mask. So if you were painting with any other color other than white, this will not do anything. So if you're not on your default colors, you can hit D on your keyboard to go to your default black and white and you can hit X to toggle between the two. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and you can start kind of wherever you want. I guess I'll start up here on her forehead. And what I'm doing is I'm making just a few small brush strokes and then lifting up my stylus because I don't want to keep it down for so long. So I just want to do the bare minimum. So it's very subtle. I'll come down here near her cheek change my brush size. Always make sure that your brush size is the size of the area that you are working on. And I do still want to be careful with her because she does have freckles. So I definitely want to make sure that I am not dodging any of her freckles. I definitely want to keep those. And you can even zoom further out so you can get a better glimpse of what you're doing. Um, but I'm going to stay in here just for visual purposes so that you all can see what I'm doing. A few small brush strokes. I'll hit up right in the middle of her forehead. And if you ever come to like a tricky spot, um, it is best to rotate your image. You can hold down the R key and use your mouse or your stylus and you can move your image in any direction that you want. Um, it is best to do brush strokes up and down. It's a lot easier. Um, it'll be a lot easier on your wrist also. And it can give you a different perspective so you can be more accurate. And if you need to reset it, just hit your R key and there's a reset view button up here. But do make sure to hit B to go back to your brush tool.
I'll get some here near her lip. I'll come back down to her chin. It is best to also um, continuously move around your image. Don't stay on one area for too long because then you are going to start doing uh, more than what is needed. This is also a good technique for lightening darker areas under the eye, but I want to be careful and not completely remove any areas like that, like under her eye or anything near her cheekbones, because there are bones under there. And if you got rid of necessary shadows, then that's when your images can tend to not look very real. Get right in here. All right, I'll do a little bit on her nose and then I will do a quick before and after. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to turn this layer on and off and you can see what difference that has already made. What does it even do that much? I've only been doing this for probably less than five minutes. But do always zoom back out and double check your work and even turn off your help layers to double check your work and see what it looks like in color. And if you want to see what work you've done, you can hold down your option key and you can click on your mask and it will show you what areas you have done. And then if you want to get back, just hold down option and click on it again. I'll turn my help layers back on. I'll probably come to a stopping point here for right now because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create another blank dodge layer just like this one. Um, I try not to do all of my dodging and burning on just these two layers, so it is best to create separate actions for a single dodge and a single burn layer. That way you can build it up and start on a fresh one whenever you feel like you need to. So for now, I'm going to speed this up and I will show you my results whenever I'm done. Okay, so this might be a good time to come to a stopping point. Um, I may take a break and come back to it later, or I might leave it overnight and come back to it tomorrow. And I think that's probably 
one of the best things that you can do as any artist is to come back and look at your work with a fresh set of eyes, whether you're a photographer, a retoucher, a musician, writer, whatever you want. Anyway, so you did see that I made several dodge and burn layers. And the reason for that is because since these layers aren't very strong and we're using a brush with a very low flow, you might have to go over some areas a couple of different times. And that's where making extra layers comes in handy so that you can get the results that you want. I don't really want to make my layers stronger or increase the flow of my brush. I don't really want to get something like this done as quickly as possible because that's when mistakes tend to get made and it just sometimes just doesn't really look right. So things do take time. This is a very um, time consuming process. I think I was probably at that for almost 30 minutes and I was just working on her face area. But do remember whenever you are dodging and burning, please don't forget about stuff like an ear or a neck and I definitely probably would have came out and worked on her hands and her arms a little bit. And you can also dodge and burn um, her eye to lighten that up a little bit. And you can also do some dodging and burning on her hair. And that can really add some volume to your image. So I'll zoom in again and I will do a quick before and after. This is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. So you can see it's a very, very clean way of cleaning up your image. And this is all non-destructive also. Um, I don't really use frequency separation as much as I used to. Um, I still do do it sometimes in case I ever have to. There's nothing wrong with using frequency separation as long as you're using it in the correct way. But dodging and burning has probably become one of my favorite ways to retouch my photos. Um, the results and the accuracy that you can get with this technique are unbelievable. So I highly encourage you to learn as much as you can about dodge and burn. Um, practice, practice, practice every single day. It will take a while, and before you know it, you will be a master at it. Even me, I've been learning about this stuff for like a year now, and I still learn new things every single day, but that's completely okay, because if you're not learning, you're not growing. And I hope that you all have learned something from this video today. So keep practicing, keep learning, find whatever works for you, and stick to it. That is probably going to do it for this video, but before you leave, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, please give me a follow on Instagram, I have a link to my account in the description below, and please also be sure to give Kesley, this lovely model you see here, a follow on Instagram as well, and the lovely makeup artist Megan who worked on this photo shoot. Their Instagram links are also in the description below. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you later.